verbs are probably the most important part of speech on the SAT because not only are there errors dealing specifically with verbs alone, uh, wrong verbs can change other parts of the sentence, can, can cause other errors. So basically verbs are critical. They're the core to the sentence, the core action, and we need to be able to recognize them, understand their forms, figure out how they work, and then understand where they might go wrong. So what is a verb? The verb is the doing or the being of a sentence, right? It's the action. It's, what ha it's what's happening. So if you have a sentence, you're going to have, as a, in a sentence, a subject, and then what's called the predicate, which is made up of the verb and other stuff. So this is the predicate. And this is a sentence. And in fact, when you've got a subject and a main verb, you can actually call this a clause. And we're going to be actually talking about that a little bit more later. So this is what a sentence is, right? It's a subject, which we just talked about. It's a noun that's doing or being the action most of the time, at least. And then it's a verb, what that subject is doing or what that subject is being. So that's a sentence. It's got to be a clause. So let's look at the kinds of verbs we might see. There are two main kinds of verbs we're going to look at now. We've got the transitive verb. And a transitive verb must take a direct object. So for instance, John carried the box to the store. John is our subject, carried is our verb. The box, again, is our direct object. You really can't use the verb carried without an object. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, John carried what? What John carried what, right? Uh, what are some other examples? Uh, well, that's actually that I was thinking one. But anyway, yeah. So John carried, right? It's a transitive verb, must take an object. Um, John hit. Well, John hit what, right? You need some kind of noun there, direct object, to make it clear what the action is acting on. Other verbs, known as intransitives, don't take a direct object. They don't need one. So, for instance, John runs to the store. You can even just make this John runs, right? That's fine. You don't have to actually run anything. Um, some, however, can act as both. So, for instance, John walks. That's fine. Or John walks his dog. Okay, now we've got a different sense of the verb walks, and now it must take a direct object. Same thing with runs. So you could have John runs, as in you know, runs around the block or John runs the company, so now taking a direct object. So some verbs will take objects, some won't. Some can take both, depending on the meaning. Now the SAT won't necessarily test you directly on transitive versus intransitive, but it pays to know the difference uh, for various reasons, which we'll talk about later with other errors. Okay, within uh, verbs in general, there are two major classes uh, we've already looked at finite verbs. So finite verbs are basically the main verb of a sentence. They're conjugated, singular, or plural, depending on what the subject is, and they've got tense. So some examples, we've already seen them. Walks, are, bought, had, right? All finite verbs, and they're finite because they're complete. They're conjugated, they're main verbs in a sentence. These are, as we said, they're the main verbs. So up here, we should make it clear that this must be a main verb, right? Now you can contrast the finite verb with the non-finite verb. Uh, these cannot stand as main verbs. They cannot stand by themselves in sentences and carry the, the, the action of a sentence. They, they can't be part of a predicate in the way a main verb can. Um, they're also known as verbals. There'll be a whole video later on verbals. But some examples include gerunds, infinitives, and participles. And again, we'll talk more about that later. So remember, let me just say a little bit more about what I mean by finite verbs being conjugated. So when we say a finite verb is conjugated, we mean that they have endings depending on whether the subject is singular plural and the tense of the action. So English doesn't really have this effect very much. Uh, if you look at other languages like German, for instance, German has a very uh, specific conjugation system. So if it's I in German, which is ich, uh, you, if you have the verb haben, uh, ich habe would be the correct ending with a be. If you had du, it'd be du hast, right? And so on, right? So we change the ending depending on if you're looking at a first person singular, second person, third person, whatever you're looking at, right? English, it's not too bad. English is pretty easy. Let's take the word, the verb walk. So if it's I, first person singular, it's just walk. This is the present tense, by the way. Uh, present tense. So I walk, you walk, okay, no change. Uh, let's do we walk, no change. Uh, they walk, no change. Okay, so, so far it seems like there's no ending change, but there's one ending change that's really important, and that's at third person singular. He, she, or it walks. So when we talk about subject verb agreement, which we're going to talk about in just a second, we're talking about in English, in the present tense, the difference between what we're going to call here a plural verb, which is really just going to be the we, they situation. You're never really going to see I or you so much on the SAT, but it would technically, I suppose, count in, in this terminology, is a plural verb, or at least in uh, just this form of it, right? So there's that versus the singular verb, which adds an S. And now we'll talk more about this later, but don't get confused with the fact that he, she, and it is singular. Walks is the singular verb. 
even though we're adding an S, right? Normally a noun, we pluralize by adding an S, but here it's not the case. When we add an S to a verb, it makes it singular. Just keep that in mind. It's nothing, the two different rules. So don't confuse those. And again, we'll talk more about this in subject verb agreement. So let's talk right about it right now.